This is a lecture 9 in the series of learning about induction motors and this lecture is about the no load and the blocked rotor test in the induction motor. These tests are performed to find out the parameters of induction motor like the resistance, reactance and the core loss and the copper loss of the induction motor which will enable to calculate the performance of an induction motor. Also draw the equivalent circuit. The equivalent circuit parameters needed for computing the performance of a polyphase induction motor under load condition can be obtained from the result of a no load test and a blocked rotor test and measurement of DC resistance of the stator windings. So the stator winding resistance is measured separately and the blocked rotor test is and the node first the no load test is done and certain parameters are computed. Then we do the no blocked rotor test and we again compute certain parameters. And based on the parameters computed from both these tests, we can draw the equivalent circuit of an induction motor. This is the arrangement of the no load test. Like the no load test in a transformer, the shaft here is not connected to any load or no mechanical work is delivered to the shaft it is free to rotate and the three windings of the stator the power is measured using two watt meter method and the current in each phase is measured using ammeter and the supply voltage is measured using a voltmeter so that are the readings which you will take during this test and the input power which is measured by the watt meter it, that is a three phase power which is measured and the I1 is a current for phase which is measured using the ammeter and the V0 is a no load voltage which you will measure. It is in then the input power which is measured in the watt meter in this case when the machine is not running on any load. It is seen that it is equal to the stator core losses, copper losses plus the magnetic losses plus friction losses in the machine. So that are the three losses which define the power which is measured during this test. The equivalent circuit of the motor can be written like this where V by root 3 is a power supply per phase which is measured using the voltmeter divided by root 3 and I0 or the I0 load is a current which is measured by the ammeter and R1 and X1 are the resistance and reactance of any stator winding which is considered per phase and XM is a magnetizing component and RC is a core loss component and R2 by S that is a rotor resistance part of the circuit. Again the rotor resistance and the core loss part can be combined as RCF resistance and again if you write in terms of no load values then the impedance at, of the no load test can be written as the voltage divided by current which is equal to the ohms law. So V divided by root 3 V divided by INL that is a no load current measured will give you the impedance of the circuit. Again the resistance of the circuit can be found out by P power per phase divided by I square NL that is a no load current. This will give the reactance during the no load test that is X naught and when you find the R naught that is a total resistance during the no load and X naught that is a total reactance during the no load using the previous formula the core loss part considering the rotor circuit RCF can be found out as or the core loss plus friction that is RCF part considering the rotor part also that can be found out from the formula xm square divided by r0 minus r1 and in this way the parameters for the no load circuit can be found out. So again like the short circuit test on a transformer the block rotor test of an induction motor gives information with respect to leakage impedance. The rotor is blocked so that it cannot rotate hence the slip is equal to unity and balanced three phase voltages are applied to the stator terminals in this or, or the no load or the block rotor test of an induction motor is done which is similar to the short circuit test of a transformer where the secondary was shorted. Here the secondary equivalent of the rotor is blocked and is prevented from running. So an ideal short circuit condition prevails here. So let's look into the circuits and the equation which can be derived from using this test. So again in the block rotor test 
the block rotor line to neutral voltage is measured. I1 is the line current which is measured by using the ammeter and the power is measured by using the 2 watt meter measured and the frequency is measured for the block rotor test. So earlier you had taken the measured the parameters for the no load test and now you will measure the parameters for the volt block rotor test using the watt meter, volt meter and ammeter. Again the impedance during the block rotor test is a line voltage or the line to phase voltage phase voltage during the block rotor stress that is a VBL divided by root 3 divided by IBL so that is again essentially V by I so you will find the impedance then you will find the resistance that is the I square R loss is equal to the power loss so using that equation you will find the resistance of the block rotor test again you will find the reactance that is equal to the impedance square minus resistance square whole square that is the impedance is equal to square root of resistance plus reactance using that equation you can find the reactance of the machine so what all we have found out is that we have measured R1 using the DC method we have found the R2 is a rotor resistance which have been computed XM is has been magnetizing part of the circuit has been comp computed the call loss part that is the RCF part has been computed the mechanical power output can be computed using the equation and the x1 is equal to x2 also has been computed so again after computing all the parameters the equivalent circuit of the of the machine will look something like this with all the parameters you are computed from or found out from both these tests when we will put in this you can find out the different parameters like the power output available at the shaft and the torque of the machine very easily so it is seen that using the no load and the block rotor test it is possible to subject the machine also to the heating condition in the block rotor test and the no load test parameters can also be found out so that's all if you like this video please do subscribe like and comment